Thomas. Hello. Welcome, welcome back. Thank you. you. Nice to be here. I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. I'm okay, how, yeah. how I, you? I thought we'd start with the good news. What is the good that, news? That you're fine. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. They're good. Yeah, and that's <laughs> and about now it. we can talk about the world. You know. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's about it then on the on the good news side. What, what's we, top, what's top of mind for you? I think we can start with the. Um, let me check. It's the. Uh, so what's the thing with the uh, share screen? Yeah, I, I do. I just found just try to find the. Uh, it's at the bottom. Yeah, I just started. That was not what I was looking for. Oh, okay. Yeah, just the. Uh, well, I mean, you're finally getting the uh, bull move in metals that yeah. you've been looking for. Uh, yeah, in, do it's, it's, in dollar terms. Yeah, um, yeah. Finally, in dollar terms, a peak in the dollar. Um, it, but you know, you you know what's been driving the gold prices down? Uh, what has been paper the reason? Ma paper manipulation. Yeah, central banks have been selling it massively. The Western central banks. I saw a um, there was a uh, analysis. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I think it, I think it's just manipulation. I think. Okay. Just for maybe I don't know maybe to get the. Uh, impression that things are not so bad or whatever but the western oh, yeah, central they, banks people say they something. people say they do that through the paper market they're not going out and selling physical gold they're probably, trying, probably not no yeah that's they're, that's they're trying good. to keep it down with the derivatives is that yeah. what you're saying okay that's probably how i ha i haven't had the time to analyze it but that's probably what i just i just saw a graph and a little explanation which shows that basically the all the western central banks are selling and china and russia are buying Big time. Big time, yeah. And, and it is like all through history, basically, if you want to prepare for a crisis as a nation or as an individual, you buy gold. And Russia, China are buying gold and we are, you know, dumping it. What's the, I don't know. Well, we're strange. dumping our oil too, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You are selling, you are selling your diesel while you have a shortage. Yeah. Which so, is, I don't uh, So, uh, you know, tell me uh, uh, bank issues. In Europe, or not now, uh, not now, but I think they are re-emerging. Re we have massive, we have massive banking issues. We actually fear that there will be a, there will be a banking crisis in Europe, with, which would start in, in October. We heard an, uh, a pre warning. Didn't happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, uh, we did hear a pre pre warning on the uh, credit, credit Swiss. Swiss. Yeah, credit Swiss. and okay. it was it was it was we re received both the public and private channels, and it was really bad. And we actually issued our first ever banking crisis warning on the uh was it the first of october or something like that uh -huh. and it was it was set for two weeks and they um they they got it done basically i don't know what what they did but they dumped the like dollar there's massive dollars were from the fed i think something like six billion went to went to swiss national bank over the uh, during yeah. the october so there was a massive like liquidity support someone was drawing uh, dollar assets in, in heavy volumes from, from Switzerland and they're probably, you know, people ran from the credit season on, and maybe the other Swiss lenders too. But we get real, we got really close. And then there was the near collapse of the, uh, um, the pension funds of the UK. Yeah, true. And it was really crucial. It's it just the report that came, I think it was, uh, three days after the, uh, Bank of England started the, the emergency purchases of, of gills, stated right. that the the um uh, the fire sales of the pension funds would when the when the Bank of in England started the emergency uh, purchases, I think it was around 11 or noon. The report stated that the pension funds would have been out of cash by around three to four o'clock. So we were about four hours, three to four hours away of, of a, another financial meltdown. It was really close call again, and many many don't many don't know this. It's funny, but yeah, once again, the authorities saved us at the, at the nick of time. What what's next? What's the next boiling pot that you see? And let me ask you, um, what's your view on uh, the strength of the euro over the last month or so? Um, will that help with the inflation uh, aspect of what I don't, you're I don't dealing know. with or I, I don't know. The, the major thing here is now that winter 
has yeah. finally arrived in Europe this week, or it will arrive according to the forecasts. So it's been extremely mild, the uh, October and November, or the beginning of November. And now it's turning. And now they start to burn through the gas storages. And now we will truly test within the next maybe four months how the global LNG market is able to cope with the demands of, of, of Europe. So it's a uh, we, we are at a turning point of some some sort. So I my prediction now is that we will see some turmoil again uh, within within few weeks. It may start from a um, from you know a, a, another energy shock. It may be start. It may start from a uh, some banking issues come to come to light, or then it may start from uh, some uh, unpleasant developments in the. In, in, in Ukraine. A tactical nuke? Uh, I don't think a nuke. I, I think Russia has been preparing for something major because they have been bombing the uh, the um, the uh, electricity infrastructure for... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and what I learned from one of the uh, Ukraine specialists is that they, uh, the Ukraine has mostly only um, uh, electric, electricity run engines. They don't have diesel diesel engines on on the railroads, and if they if they got the power, you know the they movement of troops becomes impossible. Logistics, yeah, logistics, and they, I don't know, and and they, and the tone now from the Ukrainian leadership, I think they are start, they are starting to be rather worried what's coming. So now now I hear there's the secret uh, peace talks in Ankara, Turkey. So let's let's hope that something positive comes from there. Okay, but there are right. there are like several of these issues. We're not we're not usually, I or we have not usually forecasted the war, uh, but now now it's it's so crucial for the world economy. So we have to take a uh, take a stand, kind of, or take our um, swing at it, if you may, and, and try you, to see uh, what's coming. Have you considered uh, or informed your subscriber base about? Uh, besides gold being a hedge in this environment, that uh, they could own grain contracts uh, because production, regardless of the war, uh, I've been reading is going to be down another 30% next year. We have already already last spring, basically, okay. so summer, but we have. Do you and have a we... silo at your house? <laughs> no, I... I... <laughs> I've been on. I'm, I've, I've been, you know, pretty moribund about that. That I don't have a silo here because if I would, it, it would be full of grain, for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think the, uh, if, if we come to the finance financial world poorly, I think this is the uh, this this is also uh, the global development. But I think this is the most important figure at current time in the macro world. So this is the balance sheet of the Fed. Do you see this, by the way? Yeah, the balance sheet. Yeah. So, and it's declining. Now it's truly declining. So the quantity tightening has started. Okay. All right. Uh, how big of a factor is China reopening or not reopening? Well, I, I just heard that they are not really, they are not really opening. That's the thing. And and People it, 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 it was a, what. People, I think, were uh, trying to interpret that by the fact that when G met with President Biden, he wasn't wearing a mask. So that's a sign of reopening. It could be. Can you believe with all the straws people will grasp at? It, it, but it's just come to this. Like, we, we, we really read the, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what, what, what was the word. But anyway, we, we really read this uh, omen or tells, you know. Is yeah. This so? Is this so? It, it's, it's going so crazy because politics is running stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. But the other, I don't need another figure I wanted liquidity. to sell. Yeah, is the uh, you see the composition of global credit or liquidity? Yeah, we do. And there are some interesting things here. This is this is the global from the Bank of International Settlements. So global debt, debt securities and global bank loans. Okay. And you see all these like you see the two thousand eight crisis. There is a quite a hefty drop there. Uh, and they, uh, then you see, this is the European debt crisis, which is actually the banking crisis. It Another did, question is, take, yeah, one, it didn't take um, much of a dip. 
Yeah, yeah, no, but it, but this is this is global. So it it's yeah. if if this would be like the US or something, it, it yeah. would be much higher. But these are notable in in okay. a global sense. And okay. the question is now we're here. What is this? Double dip. Like yeah, that. and and this if 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 the economy really would be growing, the global economy, this would be growing. But now we have only this, and this actually implies that we have been in a banking crisis since since twenty twenty. Since this. And it has never really recovered. So that was kind of a find to me. Interesting. And, and, and this is, of course, the massive increase in the uh, issuance of government debt. And these are like, and this is, this is not a good development if you think about the global market liquidity, because this implies the banks are not lending, may not be a bank cri banking crisis. And this implies that the uh, liquidity is coming from a uh, outside uh, regulated banking sources like governments and and also the the shadow banks again. Yes. All right. So, and this has this is first if we, if we consider that there is a banking crisis, it's not good. But the second one, second one is that if if it's, if we really have gone back into the uh, uh, shadow banking industry to get to get the you know lending and all that. It just means that they have taken bigger risks than than before. Unregulated, uh, regulated, and the regulated banks, and they uh, when they when the tide turns and the recession comes, global liquidity could just vanish. That's the thing. This is something. This this very small movements here. They'll they they'll a, a, a big story. No one really has seen or understood. This this is in my newsletter. It's uh, I don't. It's, Three weeks ago, I published this, and this was a massive finding. People don't get it, but we are. If, if these like, yeah, there. These are these are drastic developments in the behind the kind of in the in the global plumbing of liquidity, if you may, something like that. So, okay. and this implies dangerous things for the market in general. So. All right. Okay, so uh, that's just that's know, just a warning of a uh, like the sudden collapse of the uh, of which could happen. That's the thing, and and the thing is that we have made, we have made we probably have been in global banking crisis since 2020. It's just been masked with different liquidity and all that operations from central banks and and governments. So, what uh, is it possible that the um, peak that we have in ten-year yields? might be more about economic weakness, even yeah. though it, they've come from better inflation news. And, and maybe the better inflation news is a sign of economic weakness vis-a-vis -a, -vis a weak dollar and yeah, lower yields. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I, I think that's the case. And, and the thing is that the, the winter coming to Europe now, it will most likely create another like up, up hike or hike in the uh, energy prices and it will be global thing this time and, and consider this the european the sanction of the european unions will go in force between uh, i think the 7th of december and 22nd of february it will cut a 1 million barrels per day of Russian um, Ural, um, Ural oil, uh, light oil from the market at 1.5 million barrels per day as uh, some different refinery products. You have a diesel shortage in the US already and even gasoline shortage is global. Yeah. And this will come in effect during the peak months. And then there's the, you know, of course, the natural gas. They will come in force in the worst time of the year. And you know, the, the energy market could go completely haywire within the next, let's say, three months, three to four months. And this is this is again a risk no one is no one seems to really acknowledge. It's I don't know. It, it, why is it? I don't why know. Aren't the markets, uh, why aren't the markets discounting it? I don't know. Maybe because only so few see it coming. And the futures market are, I think the futures market were seeing the trouble in September, October, but then where, then there was the, the, the EU regulation and all that talk, which talked them down. 
Okay. And now, and this is, I think, there is also the possibility that the combination of of all these sanctions and and uh, and how they hit the the entirety of the global raw energy market is is something that it's too complicated to grasp at this, at this point. It may be that too. I don't know. What do you think about the UK talking about austerity? Well, they have to. But it's just talk, right? They're yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 just talk now. It's, they have to talk about it, otherwise the bond market would go haywire again. Okay. But it's it isn't it interesting that you know the the gilt or the pound they were the former safe havens, yeah, like the, the Japanese for Europeans, yes. Uh, yeah, for Europeans, yeah. Of course, they're, of course, there's a dollar, but they, they're like 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 the former powerhouses of Great Britain and and the and the, uh, Japan, and suddenly. They were not, unle uh, until the central bank stepped in. It's so, like uh, with your pedigree, why don't you explain to our community what is a sovereign debt crisis? Sovereign debt crisis is a, is a crisis where um, uh, what the government cannot afford to pay uh, its um, damn, I lost the words uh, it, it, its debt cost. You know the 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 principal or the interest. Or both, and it announces this publicly that it will not pay back some of them, some of the interest payments or some of the principal payments, and the debt crisis starts from there. Of course, every single foreign investor pulls back from that market, and basically, country falls to the hands of the IMF support. That's how it goes. Okay, okay. and this can I happen. Think in they're ongoing right now, even though yeah. the bank BOE stepped in. That we have a, oh. still have a sovereign debt crisis in the UK. Well, it's it's hidden again. I don't, I don't know, and it, it really depends. They have to talk about the austerity, otherwise, otherwise it would be there. So okay. you just it, everything is hidden now by the central bank liquidity, and actually this here, the the blue line. Everything everything we have problems in the finance sector are hidden because of this. Massive credit issuance and, and quantitative easing and all that, which, which were going on. But now it's just now they are turning back to die, the, the tide. I was just uh, thinking uh, I should have a one figure somewhere. I want to check it. So actually, this is going to the oh, yeah. Do you see the this is the balance sheet of the do you see this now? No, I'm still on the global liquidity credit. Okay, liquidity then I have to change it here. Just give me a sec. Uh, it's that, that's uh, now. Okay, how about now? Nope. You may nope. have to stop your share. Yeah, I, I stop it and start again. So I stop it. Yeah, and share it because this is this is quite interesting, actually. You see it now, Bank of Japan. Yeah, okay, and this is actually my piece going to the Epoch Times next. But this is the this is from this is the combined balance sheet of Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, and the Fed running from January two thousand eighteen till the December of two thousand nineteen. Okay. And if you remember, there was the um, the market route kind of began in 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 early October yeah, yeah. into yeah two thousand eighteen till he flipped. Yeah, yeah, and this is this is the decline of the the balance sheet of this the clone combined balance sheet and they really tried to put it down but on, on the but, but then the repo market implodes in, in mid-september and they turn it and this was the pivot here you know the fed stopped talking about hiking and now with if you consider this is like the combined balance sheet is something of for the, the, the top of about 14.4 billion but now they are in the level of, of uh, let me check, just there. They're in the level of uh, to, uh, over 25 billion. So they are, tr okay. central banks are now trying to shrink their balance sheet from a level which is 10,000 uh, 10, billion higher than this. How do you think it will go? Yeah, who's going to buy them? I don't. I don't know. And it, and it, it's going to draw the liquidity from the markets, the yeah. artificial liquidity, because credit uh, quantitative easing it, it creates also because from it the um, in it the the primary dealers actually buy the the securities also from investors, 
and they get deposits, they get money from it. And now they're drawing it all back. And who is going to buy them? Yeah, and the liquidity is going to vanish. And something like this will definitely happen. That's, that's, that's basically guaranteed. And how long it will take? Well, we'll see. But the thing is that when they started talking about this and raising rates, that's when the uh, yields of guilt really shoot up. And it's it started the uh, uh, well. They were the first to raise rates. Beyond. Yeah, they were the first. Yeah, and, and yeah. also the, uh, the quantitative tightening. And the thing is, if if you think about which institutions hold bonds, like government bonds, they are banks, they are pension funds, fixed income investors, and they are they have all come in a, under a really brutal hit. Yeah, and it will continue. And if if you just look at if you think about the crypto carnage which is now going on, okay, there's the fraud. But it also implies that the massive leverage in the financial market has started to, start, started to pull back. And it yeah. starts from the most uh, speculative corner of the market, which is the crypto market. So this is a sign. Crypto market, is, it's, it's just a sign that the kind of the, the flood is going out and we will see who, is, you know, see, see who yeah. has swam naked. Right, right. The it, it's a it's, yeah. It's a it's not a warning sign, and just that to do not invest in crypto now. It's a warning sign that the flood of central bank liquidity is going away, and it will just you know push everything yeah. down, which is not uh, uh, you know good. Well, I mean, the size of uh, debt markets compared to crypto is so huge. That, of course, uh, the the you know the implications of. Uh, the bond markets in a cri in a crisis compared to crypto is like you know they think, well, 10, we 10 point oh on the Richter scale. No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one is a, is a, it's a major event. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So that's okay. that's where we are. So there are, there are a lot of like warning signs all over, which are kind of hidden. In so should we buy the S and P after hearing this? <laughs> well, if you buy, it, well, if you buy, it, huh? just re be ready to sell it when the shit yeah. is the fan again. Uh, so. uh, always ready. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? Uh, Two thousand dollar gold uh, by the spring could be, but it requires several things to happen. It requires that something really bad, like a Russian winter uh, uh, counter attack, uh, uh, energy market blowing pro up, and the and the massive quantitative tightening leading to some kind of collapse in the financial market. Then, well, then it will happen. How about a continuation of the dollar crash, which it, it looks like a crash, what happened It, it does, week. but I don't, yeah, I haven't really, I don't know what's driving it, actually. Is it, it's, it's difficult. Interest rate differentials is the way the reporters are explaining it. Yeah, that, that could be, but I think there is something else, too. Oh, it. yeah, I mean, the BOJ had to defend and then, yeah. The Fed leaked an article, and that was mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. um, yields are uh, turning. So, yeah, yeah everybody's expecting that the inflation has died out, and it will just be. Yeah. But I don't. I don't. If you, if well, you're really what do you think to... Powell's going to do uh, in early December? We'll we'll wrap it. Well, with I think. Yeah, I think it's with the fifty basis point right. It's a it's a nod to the. Okay. But but there, but okay. But there's a twist here. If, if the energy crisis returns in Europe within the next few weeks, then he might reconsider. So everything, I think everything depends now on what happens in Europe, in, in the energy, energy sector, in the financial sector, and what happens in Ukraine. You need to watch those three because they will tell you what's coming next. Is it true that Santa Claus can't find any coal? Tell people <laughs> that, they were, <laughs> that, that, that they were naughty. Thomas, uh, you know, he, he, he can't put any coal in my stocking this year. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I, good be, I, good I should have misbehaved more than I did then, anyway. No, so. no, no, no. It, it was a good one. Yeah. All no, right. It, no. <laughs> no, it, yeah. All so, right, my bud, yeah. my friend. Um, thank you so much for showing these key charts about uh, liquidity. Etc. And and, and and I want to say to all of your community, just not. I wouldn't buy into this rally. I see this. I see. I see this as a get dead cat dead cat bounce. Okay. So that's my take okay. because the global recession is going to be here really soon. Okay. 
All right. So my, uh, my the final further up, <laughs> the further up it goes, the better the short. <laughs> yeah. And M at MT Malinin is where you could follow Thomas. And your website address? Yeah, there's actually you uh, it's my newsletter, it's at Soup's Substack. It's it's uh, which I okay. started to write again, and then there's jnseconomics.com, our firm. Okay. Well, All fun. right. Well, thanks for being a watchman for us, buddy. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> All right. Great to talk to you. Thomas, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, you could join the team in about 17 minutes on the morning edge. Everyone have a good turnaround Tuesday. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And uh, you're very welcome, Bavana, Thomas. People are enjoying it. Laura enjoyed it. So uh, thank you for edifying our community. All right, everyone. See you tomorrow. Good hunting. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.